Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Today we're going to talk about church offices. My beloved, this is a topic that really needs to be discussed because it is one of the binding principles of the order which is to take place in the church. My beloved, having said that, we are to realize that Scripture authorizes different offices in the church. My beloved, understand that Jesus died and went to heaven and he left us order in the church. He left us officers to oversee the body of Christ. And know that Jesus still continues his work on earth today as if he was here. And he does so through the church. So he governs through the church. And the church is to go out into the world and take the gospel. But first of all, before people go out into the earth, which we call evangelists or testifiers, they have to be trained and watched over and raised to know the basic foundations of the Christian faith. Now, for the sake of the church and those in it, Jesus has ordained what we call church offices. There are two types of offices, extraordinary and ordinary. The extraordinary offices are those of prophet and apostle, and the ordinary offices are those of elder and deacon. My beloved, each of these offices has its own task to fulfill. So understand that Each one has a specified area, okay? And these purposes, they take place all through redemptive history. So, my beloved, the primary purpose of the extraordinary offices of prophet and apostle was to lay down foundational normative truths. And it was to do so to the church and to watch over the church. You see, apostles were to lay down the foundational truths for the church as superintended by God in the writing of the Old and New Testaments. So therefore, my beloved, these offices like work of laying down a foundation for a house need not be done repeatedly. These offices have ceased because the writing of Scripture has been completed, and nothing shall ever be added or taken away from it. The cessation of the extraordinary offices is confirmed not only by the closing nature of of the canon, but also by the absence of any provision in the New Testament. See, we see that, however, throughout the New Testament, there is clear ordination and succession of the ordinary offices of elder. Now, my beloved, the office of elder is one of governing and ruling the church. Elders govern and rule by ministering the word of God and providing leadership for the church. The office of deacon is one of sympathy and and service. Deacons serve by attending to the physical needs of the members of the church, freeing up the elders to minister the word of God. These offices are part of the ordinary operation of the church after its foundations have been laid. In dealing with spiritual gifts, Jesus does not love and care for his church only by giving instruction for her governance. No, he also gives its members gifts of the Spirit. As with the extraordinary offices, some of these gifts have ceased, namely those that were meant to deliver and affirm revelation. You see, my beloved, throughout Scripture, there are various instances where God worked miraculously through gifting individuals, and that is for the purpose of revelatory attestation. Yet, these gifts have now ceased for the same reason that the prophetic and apostolic offices have ceased. The unique and exclusive nature of the apostles as bearers of revelation has ceased. Revelation outside of and beyond that of the Bible is not only unnecessary for the edification and mission of the church, it is also forbidden by scripture and can be very dangerous to Christian orthodoxy. But however, my beloved, gifts that pertain to building up the church, such as teaching, mercy, and leadership still continue today. Let me say this in closing that Jesus cares deeply for his bride, which is the church. He has revealed himself to her. He has organized and gifted her for the sake of her edification and mission. Christ has instituted the offices and spiritual gifts of the church as the instruments by which he has promised to govern his church. We must, as Christians, not underemphasize the weight of the ordinary offices and spiritual gifts, lest we annul and dishonor that which our King, who is Jesus Christ, has instituted. My beloved, may our submission to his revelation, governance, and service 
lead us to hold precious the church and church's only head, which is Jesus Christ. And let us do so in the current day that we live in. My beloved, the body of Christ can only be as strong as the leaders that oversee them, that govern them. Thank you for being with us today. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church, and our message title has been Church Offices. Please continue to listen to our broadcast. God bless you, and go with God.